Right, so now we've blocked out the scene, and then in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about layers and um, using this um, tool called the Populate tool, which is an amazing new tool um, that came out in 3D Studio Max 2014, so it's about a year or a year and a half old now, and um, in it you can instant cr instantly create people in your in your city scenes or your scenes or any any scenes for that matter. Okay, so a quick thing that has been missed so far or not not um, adhered to is we're going to check the measurements. So now when I first started this lesson this this whole project i mentioned setting up the grids and units and um, if we bring the measure tape up here at the moment it's 25 meters high this lamp post so it's, it's kind of a bit too high isn't it what we want to we want because i'm going to add people and the people are going to be this tall so they're going to be far too too small so I'm going to select everything, just pan out, make sure everything is selected, and scale down. And this should be about the right size. So I'm going to go to tape again and check the length. Yeah, that's more like it. That's about the height of what the people I want. I want the people to be this high. Because now we're going to use the populate tool and this tool only really makes people to scale so it's in your ribbon here in the ribbon you have modeling freeform selection object paint and populate so click on populate and you go to create flow and let's take it to perspective view Whoops. Now the perspective is very fast again, so make it slower by decreasing brackets. Remember it's got faster because we scaled everything down. So again, create flow, and a circle appears. And with the circle, you just click a path like this. Okay. And I'm going to make another flow here because I want people crossing the street, as in my photograph, which is here. There are people crisscrossing the street, and there are people going back into the street, which gives a nice perspective. So I'm going to make them cross the street, street as well, sorry. Okay. So here we have the two pull that up so that's over the pavement bit and pull it forward a bit so here we have the two paths for the crowd simulation so go back to your camera and then position it into the composition that we want at the end yeah, around here kind of thing click on the back populate flow and as you can see it says flow in the command panel so you know that you've selected it and then press there are many other options and you can look in this into this more detail again there's a lot of good tutorials about this you can create idle areas you can do lots and lots of different things you can increase the density so with the back here I want the de density to quite be quite big and the line spacing to be a bit less and the width I want to take the width in a bit as well and the same here on the one here so take the width in and the line spacing in a bit and make the density a bit more male female ratio okay yeah it's all good And what you see on the populate flow bits, you see these icons here, these blue and 
pink icons. Obviously, blue a male and pink a female, and this is where the people are going to be. Okay, so it's all set up for the crowds. So click on the black back flow and press simulate. And it takes a while to work out the simulation. And here we go, as if by magic, the people appear. And when you press create flow, it creates the flow for all the flow in the scene, not just the one you've selected. So instantaneously, we have people in our scene. I'd recommend if you've got 2015, which I have got at the moment, is to look at it because you can create seated people as well that interact with each other um, when seated. So check that out if you've got the new version. But 2014 still has populate and, and it's great. And the people are still, obviously. If you go to the time slider, press play. If you're doing an animation, they, you can make them animated, which is great. And their textures as well. Textured. Admittedly, they are um, all quite samey looking, you know, a bit like early vo versions of this program called Poser, that, if, you, if you know that. But you know, it's it's still still amazing. And I want to select everything because I don't want them textured. And I'm going to apply the same material to everything again. Because I just want it a grey look. So now the people look more like <laughs> zombies, I suppose. Um, great. And I will be editing these more later. And also you can add motion blur to the people, which is another really amazing tool. And um, that's what I hope to be doing, because I don't really want the people's details. I want just just um, motion blur, and I want to actually draw the people with a pen to suggest more concrete people, yeah? Because when you're in a street, you get this, you know, vi you know, you get the movement of the people and the cars and then the buildings. So there's a lot of movement and there's a lot of still objects as well which is a good dynamism it's probably one of the one of the reasons why i like cities and drawing them and making graphics about them i'm just going to delete this thing here okay so that's great so there's the people now i'll just pause it there so you can have a break if you want and then we'll start in a minute on layers okay so Right, so hopefully you've had a nice break, if you took one, of course. And I want to talk to you now a bit about layers, because layers are a great way to organize your scene, and especially when you're rendering, they're a good tool as well, and I'll show you why. So on the top main toolbar here, you go to this icon here, Manage Layers. Click on it, and a box should open here and it says layer not default. If you've used things like Photoshop or 2D programs, you'll know about layers. Layers basically are like transparent pieces of film that you can put on top of each other and in each piece of film has certain information. So if it's Photoshop, you could have a layer and then a layer under a layer one layer with lines on it from a drawing and a layer under it with colors. This is a bit like what we're going to do in um, Sketchbook Pro. But in 3D Studio Max, layers are 3D, obviously, and we add layers to organize our images, and we can hide the layers as well. So in this scene, we have different elements. So we have the build, the back buildings, what I call the back buildings, yeah? Okay, I'm just going to take this off realistic because it's easier to see. I'm putting on two edged faces by pressing F4. So we have the back buildings. So I'm going to select all the back buildings. Okay. And then I'm going to put them onto a new layer. 
So I created, I just created a, a new layer by pressing this. I'll do that again to show you. So create a new layer. Okay, and I'm going to call this layer back buildings. Okay, and on this layer, I'm going to add start adding all these buildings. And a, and a good tip is to hide the layer. Because when you hide the layer, everything disappears. Select an object, and on this cross, add selected objects to the highlighted layer. And you'll know that it's gone into that layer because it disappears. So I find this is a very useful thing to do. Just try and get all, make sure all the back buildings are taken on that layer. So very back one. Okay, so that's the back layer gone now. And we can add a layer called street furniture. So go to this icon here. Street furniture. Remember to hide it, then select your street furniture. Okay. So select this and add it to your street furniture and it'll disappear. This is street furniture, so add that. And then all these things here are street furniture. And we add it again. And this is street furniture as well. And then these buildings here are kind of like foregrounds, foreground buildings. So hide it and select. So select all these objects and then press this button and they'll all disappear. Okay. It's probably best to add a sun layer the daylight layer so select daylight and actually we'll put the camera on it as well so create new layer um, sun and cam and automatically they're added to this layer like that default layer okay you right click and see what is left on the default layer which is the people and the ground plane. So I'm going to make a new layer and call it ground plane. And I'm going to add the ground plane. <clears throat> and I'm going to add the pavement, a pavement we made there. So now all that's left is the people. And I'm going to I'm going to make a new layer and call this Populate, and, it, and I'll select all all of that, and then add that to a layer. So now everything is disappeared, and we can unhide everything easily like this. There's nothing on layer one, so now we can delete it, and there's nothing on that one there. But we can't delete the default layer. We can hide it, but we can't delete it. And there are other options. We can freeze everything on the layer. So a good idea is the with the sun. Let's hide everything else first. And the sun and camera can be hidden. Okay. But the sun and camera are not on that layer, so I'm going to have to look for it. Sometimes this happens. Hide, 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 hide. Oh, okay, they are on that layer. 
so on this layer I want to freeze it because I don't want to accidentally select this and move it around yeah for some reason the these little populate indicators still show on the viewport but you can't move them so don't worry go back to the camera go back to the camera view not the sun view okay and then unhide everything and when you're actually in the viewport you can actually move the camera around even though it's frozen so that's a little tip but also watch that as well if you don't really don't want the camera to move around make sure you're not actually in the viewport because it will move okay so that's your layers and you can also take the render option off so for example if you want to see your street furniture okay but you don't want it to render you can take this off as well but I'm going to put everything on here you can also make sure that each of these any of these have taken off the radiosity for example if you have a huge city in the background you can click radiosity off for that if you don't if it's very blurry and you don't need people to see it so much you can reduce the the lev um you know the the effects on the back if you're trying to save render time all right okay so that's the end of that now all there really is to do is to just to do a final tweak so the next movie is not going to be me talking on it it's going to be another time lapse and I'm going to be using all the different things that I've used in this course so far like some a bit more poly modeling not much because I'm not going to make any details I'm just going to shift some things around if I need to I'm going to move the sun a bit re render it te check out different areas move move this camera around adjust the field of view the millimeter um, on the camera just to try and get the you know the best composition and um, so you'll see that as a final time lapse and then after that we're just going to I'm gonna talk to you about rendering rendering the output for sketchbook pro make sure it's the same si the, the right size and then that's the 3d finished so sit back and enjoy the tweaking and pause any bits that you you're not sure about and want feel that you want to learn more about okay well i'll speak to you soon cheers bye